channel and welcome back if you've been here before my name is Jenny and I'm here today to do my November to be read list there's a lot going on in November as usual on booktube I'm actually going to be participating in three different initiatives this month it was very hard to narrow it down to that considering the wonderful stuff going on uh, so nonfiction November indigathon and the Octavia Butler read-along so I'm going to start with Indigathon and tell you that I'm going to be reading two books for Indigathon. Indigathon is hosted by Brody and Michelle, and I will link their channels down below. It is a new to me um, readathon. I did not hear about it last year, which was its first year. And so I'm really excited to participate in it this year. And um, they have wonderful giveaways and they have a tag and they have lots of things that you can do to participate. So please check out their channels and um, spread the word as much as you can about this in this readathon. So for fiction, I'm going to be reading Celia's Song by Lee Miracle. Now, I have heard so much about Lee Miracle. She is um, a huge author in the Indigenous author community in Canada. She has written um, nonfiction, fiction, short story. She is very well respected, very well renowned in, you know, in literary circles. And I still haven't read any of her books. And so I thought this was a great opportunity to just delve into her work. I decided to read Celia's Song, which is a novel that she wrote, um, set in a First Nation in on the, um, on Vancouver Island. And it is about a young woman who returns to her village and is helping her family to deal with what seems like kind of some supernatural issues that are occurring because this woman has some supernatural ability. I'm really interested in some very absorbing fiction this month. I feel like my fiction reading has just not been as impassioned as I wanted it to be for the last couple months and so I really tried to choose some books that sounded really otherworldly and absorbing for me to just get lost in for this month. So that is going to be Celia's song and my other read for Indigathon is 21 Things You May Not Know About the Indian Act by Bob Joseph. Two years ago um for my uh job I ran an event where Bob Joseph spoke and he, it was a really great kind of low key interactive discussion. Um, he talked about his book, but he also just talked about indigenous issues in British Columbia in general. Bob Joseph is also from a First Nation on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. And this book specifically references the Indian Act, which was created in 1876. And the Indian Act itself is a piece of legislation that was created by the Canadian government in order to try to control indigenous populations in Canada. And, um, you know, the results of which has been, you know, extreme discrimination. And, you know, it this, this act is the basis for everything, for indigenous relationships between the Canadian government and indigenous peoples. And it continues to perpetuate racism, systemic racism, um, and discrimination and inequity. So what Bob Joseph is talking about in this book is how indigenous peoples should be, um, you know, taken, this, this whole Indian act should be taken off of the table and everything should be reevaluated, giving indigenous peoples in Canada the right to self-rule, to self-determination, and to, you know, we look at how you know in these relations have developed over the years the centuries the decades and to fix them so i'm really looking forward to reading this and um bringing this to the forefront and i'm just going to segue right into nonfiction november here because this is um the book that i'm going to read for the prompt movement in nonfiction november uh, so obviously indigenous movement and a movement of um, empowerment and um, the movement of getting away from the systemic racism that has been affecting indigenous peoples in this country for far too long. 
For the discovery prompt in Nonfiction November, I'm going to be reading The Bayou Tapestry, The Life Story of a Masterpiece by Carola Hicks. Carola Hicks. Uh, I first saw this book when I was in France in 2016 and I was visiting the Bayeux Tapestry in the village of Bayeux. Um, if you're not familiar with this, this is an amazing work of art that was created uh, to depict the um, the William the Conqueror, the Battle of Hastings in 1066. And it is a very, very long tapestry. I'm not exactly sure the exact length of it, but it's yards long and it's intricately done and um, it, you know the details of it are just incredible this is some of the detail here of the embroidery and so i'm really interested in learning about um, where this comes from who made it um, all of its history you know during the world wars it was moved and protected and um, you know so i'm just very interested in learning the story of this amazing piece of art that i had the pleasure to see for the prompt time i'm going to be reading the memory illusion by julia shaw and this book talks about the nature of memory and how we believe our memories to be so accurate and so true but in actuality our memories are full of holes and their recreations they are affected by other things we see uh, and this ties into an art piece that I'm really close to finishing. I want to gather a little bit more terminology and language around the nature of memory so that I can use that in my artist statement about this piece. And I've had this book on my TBR for a very long time. Last nonfiction November prompt buzz. I'm going to be reading Say My Name by Chanel Miller. This book won the um, Book Two Prize for nonfiction number one spot and it is a memoir by Chanel Miller who was um, raped um, and went through a horrific long court process in order to try to get justice and she tells this in her own words um, and uh, I know it's going to be a very difficult read but I think it's a really important one and it is um, the only book out of the top three finalists for the book two prize for nonfiction that I have not read so I'm really interested in um, listening to the audiobook of this and I believe it is narrated by Chanel herself so I'm interested in hearing her voice tell her story. Um, another nonfiction book that I'll be finishing this month that does not fit the prompt is Queer Returns. Um, essays on Multiculturalism, Diaspora, and Black Studies by Ronaldo Walcott. I started this uh, for LGBTQ History Month um, in October, and I decided I would finish it for Nonfiction November. So I'll get through the last few essays um, for that. And I believe actually that these last um, six essays are the ones that focus more on queer issues. The first six essays focused more on the multiculturalism ideas and post 9-11 thoughts and um, some really, you know, incredible um, thought references to Black Canadian theater and um, writings, but also, you know, Black culture in general across North America and the African diaspora. So I'm really interested in finishing this. It's been a very um, thought provoking read. The last two books I'm going to be reading in November are both fiction. Uh, the first one is Wild Seed by Octavia Butler. And I am reading this to participate in the Octavia Butler slow read along that's being hosted by Musical Tati as channel. And I'm really excited to delve into some hardcore science fiction by Octavia Butler. I have read Kindred, which I really, really loved, but I definitely felt that that book was more historical fiction than science fiction. But A Wild Seed is the first in the Pattern Master series. Uh, I think it's a trilogy. And this book follows Doro, who is an entity that can shape shift and changes, change their body. And um, they meet Anyawu, and Anyawu is a, a shapeshifter that can absorb bullets and you know it just sounds like a really interesting and like wrap up in your brain and take you to another place read so I'm really excited to read along with um, 
with this slow read along and there will be a live show where people will get to um, participate and talk about the book and I will put all the information about Octavia Butler's slow read along in the description box down below along with Nonfiction November and um, Indigathon down below in the description box as well. The last book that I will be reading in November and I have actually just just started today is The Outlander by Jill Adamson or Gill. It's either Gill or Jill. Um, she uh, is a Canadian author and this book is from about 10 years ago, I think, and it was her debut and it came out to critical acclaim. This follows a young, you know, late teen girl who is accused of murder and is on the run across Canada on her own and only has her wits to save her. And it sounds like a great adventure story. And again, I want it to be wrapped up in an adventure. So that's why I'm reading this. I heard about this because Gil Anderson has been, Jill Anderson has been nominated for the Giller Prize for the second book in this series called The Ridge Runner, I believe. And so when I heard about The Ridge Runner and that it was a sequel, I thought that I would try The Outlander because I was like, it, they, people kept saying it was an adventure story. And I just really feel like adventure stories right now. That's really where my brain is. So that's why I picked this one. I hope it's super absorbing and has a lot of great nature writing and a lot of suspense and adventure in it. So that is my reading for November. It's going to be a pretty busy month. I've also set up an Instagram project called Explore Sketch November. So if you use sketchbooks, journals, notebooks in any way for your creative practice, um, I'm exploring that on Instagram and I would love for you to come and bring your voice, add your voice to the conversation and um, we can have some really interesting explorations of creative note-taking journal making, art journaling, all those types of things um, that people use sketchbooks for in the month of November. So I will be back again soon with another video. Thank you very much for watching.